Thank you all so much for stopping by today. So today we are going to begin our August garden tour in the new expanded garden. Um, I'm going to try to make this as quick as possible because I'll flash a picture up. We've been getting lots of rain um, and we are due more rain um, throughout the whole week. But let me tell you about that picture. Sometimes it does not rain and then other times it'll rain for about 30 seconds to five minutes and then it'll stop. But I did hear it pour down this morning. And if you hear background noise, for some odd reason, someone has detectors on me that every time I get ready to film, somebody's doing something. But I guess we all just have to do what we need to do in the time allotted. So let me start with this section right here. I want to start with this coleus because I will um, put the link to the video where we did this planter and we had um, the petunia and then we also had the straw flowers in this container. So do y'all see what has happened? This coleus has absolutely taken over. So I don't know where those at. So where the other two are at, they have, I guess, been taken over and you see no sign of them anywhere. But what I will tell you is this is one plant that I would love to plant again, but this time I'll give it its own separate container. And then if you all can comment below and let me know, do, are you experiencing the same? I can definitely tell that the weather is changing and fall is on its way. Um, we still are getting hot weather, but I can tell the mornings are cooler. So a lot of our plants that were suffering during the heat of the summer months, they're starting to bounce back. Now this was um, right here, a clearance. Um, they were like the daisies. And for some odd reason, one of them just kind of started dying but i do see blooms that are coming back on so i'll get in here and just kind of cut back the what's dead and maybe give it like a little dose of um, liquid fertilizer and we'll see what it does for the remainder of the season so this raised bed right here definitely looks like a jungle y'all we could not harvest basil fast enough if you remember, we made basil bombs, we made pesto. Um, I cut some and put them fresh in salads. And so now I have let the basil, um, this is the uh, Genovese basil, and then we also have purple basil over here. I have let them go to seed. And let me tell you, the bees, the butterflies, they love it so, so much. And so that's fine with me. We've had our share of basil this season. So once we start uh, getting ready to plant our fall garden, that's when I'll just go ahead and start pulling it. But I hope um, a few of them go to seed uh, this type so that we can save some and plant them next year. We do have a video coming up uh, where we are saving another variety of basil seeds, but they're very easy to save. So next, still in the uh, expanded garden, we have our ginger and our turmeric that is doing very well in these containers. And what I will do is I will flash a picture of our Roselle. Let me tell you, I cannot express to you how pleased I am with growing Roselle and I will be growing it again, but I am trying to figure out right now where can I put rows of this at because um, we have harvested some, we've used them um, fresh and we've also dried some and I use them in tea. So I really love this plant. And then also we um, are growing the Moringa right here. Look how big this is getting. Now this is our, um, that you see kind of intermixed in it. This is our Callaloo. We had a little worm problem once again. So I had to really come out here and treat that. But um, I'm telling y'all, this Moringa tree, um, this Roselle, this is something that I have got to figure out where we are going to put them because I have really enjoyed growing them this season. So I feel little droplets, so I'm gonna to try to be as quick as possible. These are the cow peas that we planted and they are growing nicely. I am seeing blooms on here, but what I do need to come back is go ahead and I see one has 
went its very own way. So I need to go ahead and train it back up. And then I'm also going to go ahead and give it um, some vitamins, some liquid vitamins, because I see a couple of little uh, cow pea shoots coming. So um, hopefully they'll make it um, before, you know, like the really cooler weather sets in. So we are getting lots of key limes on uh, actually both of our plants. We have them in pots. And one thing that I like to do when we get lots and lots of rain is I like to come back out and um, give it some nutrients because unfortunately, uh, when you have them in pots and it's a lot of rain, those nutrients uh seep out and so they can't pull from the soil so you have to come back in and you have to give them some nutrients so we use some citrus tone uh, on all of our citrus plants so that's what I'll be doing once I kind of feel like we're in the clear with all of the rain that we've been getting okay so before we keep going I want you guys to uh, go on Instagram and I'll put my handle up there and see what we found um, about a week and a half ago. I don't want to talk about it because I was shaking that day. You'll know exactly what I was, what I'm talking about because normally I do not put animals on my Instagram page, but this one um, scared me so bad and my husband was not here. And so I did not garden for the entire day and a half. I had to get my nerves back, but this is what I do want to tell y'all. Let me tell you, this is another plant that I will be growing. And I'm also going to start offering some of these on our website so that you all can experience it too. Because I am picking probably like a hundred flowers a day. And I'm looking at all the bees. Um, although it looks like it's going to rain. I'm looking at all the bees still uh, love on this plant. But this is the butterfly pea plant. Pea plant. And I've tried to train this plant, y'all. I've tried to train it, and it is loose, and it is wild, but I love it. The flowers are so pretty. So my dehydrator has been nonstop going because I come, you have to come out here every day and pick them or they'll go to seed. And I, let me get a little bit closer so I can show you. Now, I do want some of them to go to seed, but I don't want too many. But you see, um, they go to seed. And then we have some on this side as well that's going to seed, um, but you do have to pick these like every single day. And if you remember my story about these is we started them inside and I even put them on heat mats. They never germinated. And so I just kind of left them alone, took them outside and was just like, whatever, just put the soil back into the soil bin and added some more soil. And so all of a sudden when it got hot, they just start popping up out of nowhere. So this right here, I think it's two plants on this side, two plants on this side. Then we had some more pop up. So it's one plant right here, one plant over here. And I just put a newly plant that popped up. So don't do that. Don't just put the soil back in there with seeds in your good soil because they just start popping up and I just kind of figured out these are butterfly pea flowers but they do take a lot of, it has to be really really hot for them I guess to germinate and it does take a long time to germinate probably over a month seriously it took for these to germinate but I just have them trailing and again I will um, put them on our website um, because we are drying them um, if you want to experience what I experienced, them turning blue, um, and you can turn them magenta, but we are um, going to keep drying them, and I'll just let you all know when they are available um, on our website. Now, this area right here is one of my favorites, and I will be growing these uh, Jolt Dianthus again next year because I love them. I'm going to take you over on the other side really quick because we planted these from seed. I got these in the ground late, but they are so pretty to me and they just keep growing. We had a little problem at the beginning um, with something eating them, but it looks like we got that up under control. But I'm going to walk over here and just let you see these mini bell peppers. Like, the plant is dripping with them. We have red over here. These were orange. We cut those off. And then these were orange. We have a couple of yellow ones. 
um, over in the garden. But this, um, we grew many bell peppers. We've been growing these for maybe like two or three years now, and they are definitely one of my favorites in the garden. But I actually have to come here and cut some of these off, but they just look so pretty. And I just love, uh, love them, love eating them fresh, love putting them in salads, but we've been getting so many that I think uh, I'm gonna have to freeze some, but I also would like to do like a roasted red pepper and put them maybe in some oil. So we have different options on that. So we'll see what comes, but this is like one of my most favorite colorful parts of the garden because you have the purple basil. Um, we have some thyme growing back there. We got our butterfly pea flowers all in this area. I just love this area. But let me show you what I discovered today or yesterday because what I'm gonna have to do is I'm gonna have to go pull out my bird netting because I already know what to expect of the little surprise that we are starting to get. So can you see the figs that are starting to grow? And we got this plant last year. Um, we ordered it online and it kind of died back, but now uh, it's coming back and we are getting figs. I didn't expect figs this year, but I do see that they are starting to come on. And so this is another one that is in the pot and that we're gonna have to go ahead and replace the nutrients because I would like to have a few uh, figs this year and it looks like we are gonna have uh, a few so that's always good news and then right here we redid our strawberry bed because I let it go and I should be ashamed of myself and that's why it took me so long and it should have that was punishment to myself because it had it was just like a jungle in here and then we also got our lima beans coming on as well if you could see the pods right here so um, everything seems to be doing good. I still got to do a lot of deadheading, but everything seems to be doing good. Um, as we transition into the fall, I have started some fall uh, leafy greens inside. Um, as a matter of fact, we have some mustards that are just about ready to start hardening off because I want to go ahead and get those in the ground. Now, I most definitely have to get in here and deadhead, but I just want you to see how these roses have came back. These are the David Austin Desdemona roses, and they are just like dripping with beauty. And I actually cut them back um, maybe like a month, month and a half ago, cut them down real good, gave them some plant food. But that's how you can tell when fall is coming again is because they are really doing so well. And we cut back this gara too, because this gara, when I tell y'all it was out of control, like I had, y'all know, I tell you, I have to see what is going on in an area. And then we had two plants that died. So we popped these um, verbenas in here. And, but I'm just amazed at these beautiful roses right here. But we are, look, I got a lot of deadheading to do. So we had a little 20 minute shower there, but I just wanted to show you, this is the other side of where we planted the phlox and the angelonia. And so I definitely will be planting more um, next year because it is so pretty. I like this color combination and we'll walk really quick over here. Um, these are uh, angelonias from seeds as well. Now my lamb's ear, I don't know what happened to this one, but as you see, it is dying. So I have to uh, come over here. It looks like some type of mold growth or something was happening but I will focus on that when it's not raining. And then y'all, our azaleas are starting to bloom again. And this color is so pretty to me. So they're starting to put on new blooms. Um, we have them going right here. I wish I would have known because we have some three over there as well. And if I had known what I know today, I would have put the other three like back over here. So let's walk really quickly up to um, where our um, flowers are starting to bloom right here. Pentas is also another uh, flower that we will be growing this year because we actually bought these on clearance for like $1. And I noticed that they have really taken the heat, no problems whatsoever. And then um, so I definitely want to grow some more of those. I think we only had two 
one right here and then we also had one here as well but we did have a few plants die like this one so um hopefully we can fl find some clearance flowers um so that we can kind of fill in some of these spots right here but um i am definitely happy with the way things are growing here and so let me show you a couple of other spaces and then we are going to end this video so here is another indicator that fall is coming because we have our tomatoes starting to put on more blooms here now let me tell you about this tomato it is supposed to be a patio tomato that i think read 18 inches in height maybe 18 inches in width and right now that's not the case but that's okay we got lots of fruiting going on and this is another indicator because we have these in our right here on our patio that i need to come back in with some tomato tone so i can make sure that they don't struggle while they're putting all this energy into fruiting and as you guys know with my tomatoes I kind of uh, over time just take those bottom leaves off and just let them uh, go up so it can put that energy into uh, making more fruit for us. So we are going to walk really quick to the front and then we are going to end our August garden tour because it's starting to rain and I don't know, it's um, a little bit more than five minutes. So let's start right here with our drift roses. I'm gonna get a little bit closer because I want you to see the amount of roses that they put on at once. And we actually have to go in and do a little bit of deadheading, but this is why I love them. And these were actually Clarence plants as well. And then over here, our Clarence Dianthus, those are doing good. And then um, our Angelonias that we planted from seed, those are doing good as well. Our Agapanthus, they're not coming up this year as far as the flowering, but they are perennials and hopefully we'll, uh, they'll get a little bit bigger next year. But what I really wanted to show you as we go through here is the anemones that are starting to produce flowers. Now, um, in the past, I've told you that we've had a hard time with pest on our anemones, but we continue to spray them with BT, but it's kind of hard when it rains so much. Um, so you have to gauge the weather and just kind of spray accordingly, but I'm gonna get a little bit closer so that you can see the flowers are starting to come on, the anemones. And these were clearance that we got last year. So they give like these pink flowers and the flocks here that we planted from like a bare root. They are starting to bloom, but the bloom heads are really weighing them down. So I have to come in and kind of clip them back. So make sure you download our free ebook, Five Tips to a Flourishing Garden. We will make sure we have that link in the description. So as always, thank you all so much for watching this video. And I hope you share this video with your family and your friends. And if you're not a subscriber, we would absolutely love to have you as a subscriber. So make sure you tap the bell so that you can receive notification each and every time we upload a new video. Again, thank you all so, so much for watching. Until the next video, bye-bye.